we're live. Okay, yeah, we're live. All right. I uh, just realized, but let's see. How is the audio? Can you guys hear me? I think you guys can. All right, well, we should be good. Now, before I actually get this started, even though you guys are obviously going to be watching this and it's technically already started, I'm going to grab some apple juice because why the hell not? Uh, <laughs> Got to keep hydrated for these, especially since they're longer. But, anyways, oh god. <laughs> anyways, hey guys, it's Mister again for another video today, and we are back for our second uh, video of today, second video of the series uh, for today. So uh, yeah, we're gonna be here to sim through year number eight, and I'm uh, relatively excited because you know I think this year with the simple line changes we have made. I think we can get our way back into the playoffs, so you guys think so? I hope so. I have confidence in this team. We have a phenomenal forward core. We really do. I mean, maybe we're missing that great, a great playmaker. I mean, our great playmaker is Vladislav Nemesnikov right now, and he's not even that great. Like, we need a for sure playmaker, but... I don't know. In our D, I mean, our top four are just tremendous. Like, honestly, our top four is possibly one of the top, best top four in the league. And obviously, you guys can agree with that. Cause, or you guys can let me know if you agree or disagree with that. Because we looked, uh, hopefully you guys watched it, but we looked at the entire league in the last episode. That was uploaded a couple hours ago earlier today. So, yeah, the only thing that is kind of lacking, I think, is the goaltending. And to be honest, I think the only reason why our goaltending is, or th I think the only reason why we're only li or why we're listed as a hopeful and not a contender is because of our goaltending. So we'll see. Uh, we'll see if that matters at all. Now, really quickly, yeah. So just to show you, that's the hopeful status, uh, or we're listed as a hopeful status team. But one thing I want to do quickly is I want to look at contracts to see who we have to resign this year because I think we have to resign Hedman. Yes, and he does not want an extension. All right. How much? Oh Jesus, we have like thirty-six million dollars. It says right there. I didn't realize it said that right there. To be honest, we have thirty-six million in cap uh, that we could give out. So I feel like thirty-seven is a bit much, but you know what? It's Victor Hedman. He's staying on this team. He's never leaving. I could even go five years, but I want. I'll do four for sure, and I'm gonna try. 8 million for the next four seasons and we'll see if he likes that. I know he doesn't want an extension, but for the fact that uh, we're signing him during the season, maybe he would like that contract. Uh, as well, we have Anthony Sorelli um, and Anthony Sorelli uh, he wants a decent amount of money. I mean, I wouldn't mind locking him up, but to be honest, I think I'm going to lock him up for four years as well. Just like because why not just lock a bunch of players up like our main core for the next four seasons? Like we have Mercury locked up till 2028, 20, 2029. You know what? That works a lot. I think that really does work. So, yeah, I guess players that I want to. I don't know about all those players, but the ones for sure that I just I want to get out of the way right now are Sorelli and Hedman. And we're going to give them both four year deals. So, yeah, I mean, Sorelli also doesn't want to resign, but I think just for the fact, for some reason, they'll take way less money uh, when it's midseason, or I guess preseason, I guess. Preseason, midseason uh, uh, offers, they seem to always, uh, or seem, they seem to always be willing to take less money, so we'll see. So, Hedman rejected, which means Sorelli will as well. All right, well, uh, okay, I think I might just offer them what they want then um or maybe, well a little bit more than what they want i guess we'll see let's uh, let's try this again then so four seasons for headman we will give him 8.3 million and we'll see if he likes that instead and as for sorelli we'll give him four years we'll give him five million which i'm relatively okay with because I mean I think he's a very good second line center for us and who knows depending on how good of a season he has this year he could even grow to become our first line center so uh, let's uh, let's see um, for game one 
of the preseason. We won 6-3 game two. We lost in a shootout. Game number three, we won 7-2. Wow, quite the blowout there. And now we start our scouting for the season. Uh, we're going to do two weeks. Uh, I really, I'm, I think I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do the OHL or each part of the OHL two or three times because uh, you just need to, honestly. Oleg Tutin leading our team in points with six right now. Had been rejected and severely rejected again. All right, so maybe it is different. Um, maybe you do have to actually just give them, or it's just like the off season where you have to give them a bunch of bunch more money than what they want. I, I don't know why I'm trying to save so much money. I mean, I guess it really doesn't matter. Oh, wow, his his offer went up, though. Well, that's unfortunate. Well, yeah, we have $36 million in cap space. I'm really not worried about it. 9.5 for the next four seasons for Hedman, uh, which is that more than what he's making right now? Um... No, it's less. All right. I believe he's not actually making that much money, though, because I believe just since we were so low under the caps floor when I uh, drafted all these players that everybody's contracts went up. And as for Sorelli, I'm going to give him 5.5 for four seasons. Like, again, like I said, I'm just not worried about hitting that uh, or having any salary cap problems. Not as of right now, at least. But, I mean, it could change, but like I said, I just don't see it. I don't see us having any problems with it. We lost to Detroit 4-3. to three. We have a back-to-back, -back, Ottawa and Buffalo. Can we beat those two teams? We uh, shut out Ottawa 4 to nothing. Nice. Buffalo, we won 4-3. to three. Cal Foot now leading our team in point. Hedman accepted and Sorelli accepted. All right, guys, so there we go. We got two of our main core players that have been here since year number one back on the team, and let's just advance uh, past this Florida game. They are not doing good. 1-5-0. and oh. Hopefully that's how they actually are in the regular season because that means uh, if we have to go or if we make the playoffs, that means they may, they won't make the playoffs. They have any record near that. So Yuha Alavara, the uh, rookie, led our team in scoring in the preseason with eight points, four goals, and four assists in seven games, which overall really isn't too bad. So one thing I want to see... Can I see rookie skaters? That's on our team right now. Yuha is actually the only rookie. Huh. I thought there was more than that, but he had a sick preseason. Plus three, eight points. Nice. Oh, yeah, he's on the power play, too. He had five power play points. Ooh, that would be nice to see if he can do really good on the power play. Now, I don't remember ever looking at the awards for this past season. So we're going to look at them. So the Stanley Cup went to the Colorado Avalanche. The President's Trophy went to the New York Islanders. Obviously, uh, Colorado made it to the final against the Montreal Canadiens. All right. The R. Ross went to Stamkos. So the past three seasons, it has all gone to a Florida player. And it's always that same guy. Or it's always one of the two guys on the top line of Tolvanen and Stamkos. Uh, almost the same thing for the Hart. The past two seasons have gone to Tolvanen and Stamkos for the Hart. Um, but Norris, Rasmus Dallin won the Norris last season. I think that may be his first. Uh, Valeria Nachushkin won the Lady Bing, cutting uh, the streak that Tolvin had, had of back-to-back -back years. Uh, Calder went to Caulfield. All right, nice. Uh, we have yet to win a Calder, and I really want to, so hopefully I can do that this year with Yuha, uh, Yuha Alavara. We'll see. Uh, Con Smythe went to John Gibson. UC Saros won the Vesna. Soderstrom won the Jennings. Saren Hyma won the Bill Masterton. O'Reilly for the fourth straight season with the Selkie. Who wants to call it the Patrice Bergeron Award when you can call it the Ryan O'Reilly Award? Come on, boys. Let's go, O'Reilly. I love that so much. That's amazing. And I don't know if you guys knew this, but Ryan O'Reilly is absolutely one of my favorite players of all time. He is so good defensively and offensively he's so underrated offensively as well he's honestly he's underrated defensively too anyways i'm not going to go on a rant about it oh, i could go on a rant about that trade forever ted Lindsay went to stam coast again somebody on that top line in florida winning that and the maurice richard this past season went to tarasenko uh, i think that might be his first maybe his second throughout uh throughout uh 
this uh, this series. So I wanted to check the AHL because I was 100% positive that Leonov had the most points in the regular season, which he did, which that is very nice to see. The uh, the best goaltender was also Oliver Rodrigue. That's nice to see. I did not know that. So we had a couple of player awards. That's very nice. Calder Cup. Syracuse, man, back-to-back -back finals. We were unable. Uh, wait. Oh, yeah. We. Oh, okay. So the McGregor Kirk Kilpatrick is... Okay, yeah, sorry. The, Ma the McGregor Kilpatrick award uh, or trophy is to the team who had the most points in the regular season, which was us for the past two seasons. And... We had the best regular season in the East for the past three seasons. Uh, <laughs> uh, fuck. Cleveland. Uh, so, obviously, we won. Yeah, we've won the uh, FG Teddy Oak, uh, which I believe is our, yeah, the North Division. So, we've won that for the past three seasons. And then we've made it to the Eastern Conference for the past two seasons as well and falling short both times. So, hopefully this year, if we make it a third time, We'll be able to actually win that Calder Cup. That is a goal to finally is to win the NHL Cup and then win the Calder Cup as well. So I guess we are all done now, guys. So let's sim on up to the regular season. And I guess we'll get right into it. I mean, I've gone over everything I wanted to go over plus, um, plus everything that uh, I wanted to show you guys. So... I think we're good to go. So I guess we'll just send the first month of October, and we shall see how that works out for us. Um, oh, sorry. I just read a tweet, and it said, uh, or it's an NHL tweet, and it says, quote, captaincy is not the main topic of interest on the mind of AM, or at AM34. I was thinking it said, and uh, captaincy is not the main, to or is the main topic of interest for Matthews. I'm like, damn, the kid's going for the captaincy, which, if you think about it, is an option, but a lot of people think that Tavares is going to get that captaincy, but Dubas is still ready, or Dubas, Shanahan, Babcock, they're all still waiting to see who they really want to be the captain, so they said that they're going to wait for the right time, and when that time comes, then they'll announce the captaincy, which means we probably won't have another captain for the Leafs this season coming. Um... We shall see, though. We shall see. Uh, let's see. Uh, did I do the forwards? No, I did defense, I believe. We're going to go bullies one week. So, yeah, I think I'm going to go through the WHL everywhere twice. Uh, for four weeks, four weeks, and then two weeks for the goaltenders. Just because WHL is where the majority of the draft normally is for some reason it's just where well players are actually elig eligible normally go or come from the whl for some reason but in our first 10 games we went 10 3 and 0 and at the end of the first month we have a record of 9 4 and 0 syracuse is 8 3 and 1 both teams have played 13 games no sorry syracuse has actually only played 12 um but pretty good start for both teams if you ask me that's 70 Excuse me, 17 points for Syracuse and 18 points for us, and we are tied for first. And actually, now we have the lead for first in our division because we have a game in hand on the Senators, who have 18 points with us as well. Todd Jaspers, do you see what I mean? He is, I knew it. I knew he's better than just being able to put up 50 to 60 points. I just needed to find him that right line mate. And so far, it's looking pretty good. 19 points, really only has 11 uh, but he is a player. He's almost point per game. Sorry, yeah. I don't know. He's only has 11. Comer only has 6. <sighs> That's weird. That's really weird. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. I don't, maybe he's just having a wicked season so far. Speaking of wicked season, <laughs> Ryan Merkley. Hopefully he can get back up into that 50-point mark because last season was the first season he ever, uh, or in his NHL career, has never gotten past 50 points. Uh, past 52, even, I should say, so interesting. Uh, but if he's playing like he is right now, he will be a point-per-game player through the entire season. Uh, Tony D'Angelo, hmm, only two points so far. That's a pretty slow start for him. Calfoot's not doing too bad. Uh, not too bad at all. What about that bottom pair? The goal for this bottom pair, again, is to hit 
20 points combined. Woolley had six last season, and uh, Stillman had 19. You know what? If Stillman can get 20 points alone and Woolley can get 10 points, so it combined 30 points from them this season. I would love to see that. As for the goalies in our first month, Thomas is back down to an 83, but he's doing tremendous with a 927 save percentage and a 2.15 GA. Connor Ingram hasn't even gotten a start yet. I have auto-rotate goalies off. That's why. That is why. Let's go turn that off. I forgot to turn that off from the last episode that we actually simmed through. Um, so let's go. I clicked the wrong thing. Let's go and we'll uh, change that because I would like... Ingram to get some ice time because he may be still our backup goalie. Uh, where do I actually do this? Right here. Goalies. Auto rotate goalies on. There we go. Alright, so we should be good now. Uh, there we go. Alright, so we should be good now. And uh, I guess we'll uh, sim through November now. So. Let's uh, head on over and do that. We'll see if we uh, continue to do as good as we did throughout November like we did in October. Let's see. First game of November. <laughs> Absolutely phenomenal one. We won 9-1. to one. Very good. Then a home-and-home home with Toronto. We won the first one. We won the one at home. Then they won theirs at home. That was also a five-game win streak we were on for a little bit there. But uh, they obviously ended it, so it's, it's all good. We, we won one game against them, which is a divisional opponent, which is very nice to see. Our arch nemesis, the Florida Panthers, we beat them as well. I didn't get to see what their record was like, unfortunately, because I would have really liked to see if it's anything similar to what they had in the preseason. Uh, and after we edit the scouting assignment, I need to take a drink because my throat is getting super dry already which is not good, so just one second, guys. All right, we're good. So, uh, I think those line changes might have worked because we were not doing this good last season, and after the first two months, we are currently 18-8-1 in the NHL and 16-7-2 and in the AHL. Jasper is still leading our team in points. He's still over point per game as well. Uh, I just want him to finish around the point per game, Mark. That is all I want. Uh, Sorelli only 17 points. Again, I don't like... I mean, he's not doing bad, but I just... I feel like because of how good Jasper's is doing, I feel like he should be doing better. And Cullimore with 13 points. I don't get it, man. He's playing penalty kill, not power play time. Maybe that's why... Yuha has 17 points, which he's not doing too bad. Five points on the power play so far, all right. Uh, Drew, he's got 17 goals. <laughs> he's doing great right now. He's. Uh, I think Drew may be on pace for his second 40-goal uh, season. Uh, yeah, that would be really nice to see. And Mesnikov, 20 points, not too bad. Antonin has eight points points in the NHL at 29 last season so Lawrence like seven eh, I mean <laughs> Tewton uh, 11 is not too bad so to be fair our third line isn't doing that bad fourth line uh, pretty similar point totals actually so interesting Libanov scoring a lot more goals than I expected from him uh, as well, so let's. I, I I'm curious because I don't remember. So our first power play is Sorelli, Nemestikov, and Jaspers. Um, Sorelli, how many power play points does he have? Five. And there are two assists. I think. Yeah. Is that what I said? Um, wait. No, he had two goals and five points. So Jaspers has eight assists. Um, Sorelli has. Three assists. Those two have a combined three goals. And then Nemestikov has three goals on the power play. I'm confused, man. What about Alavara? Power play, he's got three goals. Drew has got three goals as well. Uh, who is the other one? Joseph. Matthew Joseph, he's got one power play goal. So is our goals coming from our defense on the power play? 
Hedman has one power play goal. Ryan Merkley has four power play goals. Wow, okay, well, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> that's really weird. But those two, that top two is working out again. They're back uh, where they were a couple of seasons ago, pretty close or around the point per game mark. So that's nice to see. Second pair, D'Angelo looked to pick it up or looks to have picked it up, and Foot looks to have slowed down, which is interesting. If only they can both get set together. And Ronnie Woolley, it's not looking too good to get those 10 points so far. Pat Stillman, to be fair, it's, not also, it's also not looking good to get 20 points this season. Interesting. Um, goalies, that's the last thing I want to check. Ronnie Thomas, still doing phenomenal. His stats have even got better. I believe the same save percentage. But I think his, or I'm pretty positive his GAA went down by a point zero three, And Connor Ingram has just been phenomenal as well as a backup. Wow, okay. <laughs> really, really good start so far. Uh, let's go check our AHL team. Leonov leading our team in points uh, for the second season in a row, uh, at least of, as of right now. Uh, Brett Howden is listed as a third liner. Man, I should, I feel like I should have him in the NHL. Andre Blatt not doing too bad. It's Kelly Zabinadred. 11 points. Not a lot. Uh, JC Godard. He's not doing too bad. Still this has a fourth liner, but if he jumps out to a third liner, I think I may bring him up into the NHL. Because Ranko is doing pretty damn good as well. Uh, Torsten Gustafsson is doing relatively good as well. Steven Fast. Not too bad. It was Gionta, you know, I'm just going to, oh wow, what the hell. Steven Wolf is doing really good. Wow, he looks to be like a sick playmaker, which is interesting because he's got a much better shooting category than anything. <laughs> sure. Jesper Modine. Uh, Gertsen. Eh. Yeah, well, that's it. Defensively, fair. Chip Churis still listed as the, or the same potential they've had. Uh, fair had 15 goals last season. What the hell? Uh, <laughs> that's weird. Kent Welsh. Uh, Valesi is a defensive defenseman. Let's be real. Bodie is as well. Uh, Kristanovic listed as an offensive defenseman. One goal. <laughs> That's all he's got for his AHL stats so far. Rodriguez lists as an 80, but it looks to be statistical growth, not natural growth. He's doing phenomenal right now as well. So uh, both teams so far doing very, very good, and uh, hopefully it does not change. We're still first in our division as well. Let's uh, head on through the, uh, the, or the next month, I guess, because, uh, you know, sure, I feel like... That would be important to do. So did I finish the WHL? Yes, I did. Now we'll move on to the rest of North America. And uh, we'll see where that brings us. First game of the month was a loss. That's not very good. First two games were losses. All right. Holy shit. I, I, I don't think you guys would have been able to hear that because I'm using my Xbox mic to record this. But Jesus, that was a shitload of thunder. I thought it just started absolutely pouring a couple minutes ago, and it did. Oh, my. That was some really loud thunder, too. That was crazy. That, like, and I, was, I could hear that from the basement. That was loud. Um, wow, that was, ter that was terrifying. I'm not actually scared of thunder. That was terrifyingly loud, and I was not prepared for it in any way. <laughs> Damn. All right. Back on track with the game now. Let's see, how are we doing? So, this month really did not look like a good one at all. We had a lot of losses that month, so maybe we just had a hot start, which is not good. Although Syracuse, they don't seem to be slowing down at all. Todd Jasper is now no longer a point-per-game player either. Still first in our division right now, though. But Buffalo has three games in hand, and there are only two points behind us, which means they will more than likely pass us. Um... Huh. Interesting, interesting. Uh, I don't know. I wonder if you guys could hear that one, because that one came from my left. The first one came from my right. Jesus, that one was loud, too. Um, 
I don't know what we need here, guys. I don't know what's going on. That mo Maybe that month was just a bad month. I don't know. It's just, there seems to be a lot of minuses. Uh, well, not our top pair, that's for sure. <laughs> our top line, they are minuses. It just seems to be our fourth line and our bottom pair defense, which to be fair, our fourth line is awful defensively. Uh, the goalies, they both seem to uh, slow down a little bit. Ingram especially, his stats went down a lot. Thomas's went down a little bit, but... Hmm, interesting. I don't know what to think about that. Or I don't know what to think about that, to be honest with you guys. I think that might have just been an off month for us. So, let's head back in. Now with the new year, let's, uh, let's get it going, boys. Let's send to the deadline as I take a drink again. Sorry. <laughs> All right, I think we are currently on a five-game losing streak, which is not good, which means we are now most definitely not leading our division in points either, so that's not good. Oh, man. Uh, I don't know what to do. Do I make line changes? There's our first win in a couple of weeks, I think. Another loss if we lose this Rangers game. Okay, stop. Jesus, what happened here? Okay, so I guess we really did just have a hot start because ever since December, out of, we've lost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 out of like 20 games. What the hell? Oh my god, that is awful. We're going to have to... Oh, geez, we aren't even in a playoff spot anymore. Our division is tight as hell, though. What the heck? 50, 50, 49, 49, 49, 46, 44. Toronto's the only team that's out of it. And then if you go to the Metro, it's the same thing. 65. Well, Philly's, Philly's for sure, like, way up there. But then there's New York with 55, Columbus 55, Carolina 53, New Jersey 53, Pittsburgh 52, and the Islanders 47 who are all majorly in it. And then the Caps aren't even too far out. Like, they go on, like, a five- to six-game win streak. They're right back in there. Um, but the way we are playing right now is not good. So let's make some line changes here. Lipanov has dropped. All right, well, I'm making a, I'm making a roster change here then because he's listed as a third-liner. We're calling up Brett Howden, actually. <laughs> I saw J.C. Goddard. Oh, man. We're going with J.C. Wait, which one's better defensively? I, oh, Jesus. J.C. Goddard is... We're going to bring him up. Eh, wait, make more roster moves. And let's call down Lipanov. Uh, scroll down here. Where is he? Uh, Lipanov, yeah. Even I was on waivers and we'd be under the cap. I can't even put him down. Ronnie Woolley, how you doing? Zero points so far. Stillman only nine. I'm so tempted to make a defensive change as well. But Chip Chara. It's an option. Uh, where is Bear Fair? Also an option, but I think I just I don't know. I think I might call up Howden as well. Uh, and the NHL, let's see. Who could I send down then? It have to be Libanov and, like, like. Like's on pace to have a career high in points. So I don't think I should do that. Oh, I'm sorry. And apart from that, then I don't know, like... Antonin's a third liner too, and Radish, all third liners. I don't know what to do. Does that work though? It does work. Lipanov could get claimed on waivers though, which is not good. Uh, can I not call up Howden? Like, can I keep Howden down there? I wouldn't be able to call Lipanov up. 
I might have to call someone up then. Wouldn't be Leonov. Someone that doesn't have to play. So rank all would that work? That would work. You know what? I'm just shit. I don't want to do that. All right, let's call. Uh, no, I guess that's just what we're gonna do. It's just I guess then. So let's go edit some lines. Since I cannot send down leaping off, we are gonna try J C Goddard uh, in the NHL now. I gotta give him a fourth line center time. It's not abysmal at face-offs, but <laughs> whatever. Tyson Cullimore. Really don't want to demote you to that fourth line. But it may be for the best. Uh, Alavara, how you doing, buddy? Not too bad. Uh, I feel like I'm having two goal scorers like Drouin and Alavara together is not working. Although, I mean, they aren't doing bad. 170 shots already for you, Alavara. Drew, how many shots? Only 127, which means, yeah, let's let's change that up then. Pentanen, are you a playmaker? Yes. Let's try Pentanen with Drew and Joseph then. Tewton, like and Alavara. Radish, Godard, and Colomore defensively. Do I change anything? I'm not going to change anything. Wow. Uh, wait. Okay, sorry. Never mind. I was really confused. Sorry. I thought D'Angelo was now leading our defense in points. I'm like, really? That's uh, that. No. Hedman, 30. Uh, Merkley, 34. And then 27 for D'Angelo. And then 20 for uh, Foot. And Wooly and Stillman's just not doing very good. Uh, how's the goaltending doing now? Because there's just no way. Um, Ingram has been awful. Ingram <laughs> has been awful. Um, I mean, Ronnie Thomas still hasn't even really started doing bad. Um, like, I don't understand that. Uh, who do I put in now? Mitchell Stevens? Alexander Volkov? Maybe. Do I have... Glue's not playing. Uh, I guess we're going to go with glue. Yeah, we're going to go for glue. I still don't really know how you actually pronounce that name. Such a weird last name. <laughs> uh, all right, well, there we go. I was thinking glue had the top six. That's why I kind of freaked out there for a second. I like w wondering why he wasn't playing, but we're good. All right, so we made some line changes. Hopefully, um, uh, we'll... Fix whatever the problem is, because to be honest, I don't know. Like we just have been on losses, of, or have just been piling up the losses, which I don't understand at all. But pff, what can you do about it? I guess. Here we go with the first first game of line changes. We won. We won our first two games, outscoring our opponents uh, a combined fourteen to four. Wow, and then the last three games, outscoring them 15 to 3, I think it was. <laughs> uh, if only we had have been doing that the past month, uh, but unfortunately we weren't. But now, by the looks of it, we may be back uh, to our original ways. We had a regulation loss there to Montreal, which definitely sucks. Would have been nice to have... Uh, to have won that, but you can't win them all. Let's be real. Four and two, three to one. It's not looking too great. We had that big win streak there of five games, but <laughs> Nick Merkley, I, I'm sorry, I cannot bring you to this team because we did not draft you. Why you three are on the block, I do not know. But let's take D'Angelo off. Maybe that'll make him play better. 7-0 uh, win, I'm going to say it did, most definitely. Shootout loss and another win, so February most definitely was a better month for us than the past two beforehand, which is nice to see. Um, uh, sorry, I'm just, I had to type someone. There we go. Let's uh, scout. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for the new scouting system in NHL 19. Are you guys? 
it's going to be interesting. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know if it's going to be hard to adjust to or what, but it should be interesting nonetheless. Now, I am curious to see, guys. So, all right, well, we're back atop of our division. That's nice. Now, guys, I'm curious. Is it possible for us to make a trade for Nikita Kucherov? As that is what I want. They are contending, or they aren't doing very good. He's got max trade value, and he's a franchise player. It's, it has, it's just not going to happen. But, <laughs> screw it, let's look at it anyways. We would have to give up someone, like, we'd have to give up Mer a Merkley or a Hedman or a Jaspers or a Drew. Even Cal Foot doesn't even have enough value. Like, we'd have to give up, like, Foot and then some prospects. Like, oh, man. I just, and I'm not, I don't want to, and I'm not supposed to use draft picks. Let's just see something. What if we try foot with Nash and someone like Matthew Joseph as well? I mean, I, I highly doubt that would go through, but you know what, it's worth a shot. What? Uh, what about a goaltending prospect? Do we have any? We could go for Shannon Cato. Oh, whoa, 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 wait. I didn't even realize we had the... I totally forgot about this guy. This was our first round selection last season. Uh, last season? Yeah. Preston McKay. That could help us out tremendously to make a trade like this go through. And that would make it a lot easier trying to not give up on a... Oh, Jesus, they have a lot of goalies. I'm gonna, I am would, I wouldn't be able to give them Kato, I don't think. And I have to give them a skater, which is fine. But let's see, who could it be? Like, I don't want to give up on Welsh. I feel like Nash may not make it, though. Too many goalies, that's what I thought. I'd have to take one back. Is there any goalies that they have that's undrafted? Uh, that's... Let's see. Obviously not Saros, but all been drafted by San Jose. Well, Giftopolis. When was he drafted? 2023. What about Gunderson? Also 2023. Alright, you know what? I think I would just have to take out Shan Kato, which sucks because that's a lot of value that helped us out there. Let's go back to skaters. Uh, who would I have to give up, guys? I don't want to give up on Sorelli, Nemestikov, or D'Angelo. I don't want to give up on Foot, Drouin, Jaspers, Hedman, or Merkley. Like, um, Kristanovic? That's not bad. Does that, does that work? <laughs> I didn't think so. But it was worth a shot. What about that other guy, Gerson, as well? Does that work? Now, you know what, guys? I'm willing. I know it's a draft to glory, but I'm willing to make uh, uh, make a trade, including our first-round pick. Still doesn't go through. Ah, fuck. I don't think. I don't think there's anything we can do here then, unless I give up one of my top players, which I really, really do not want to do. I don't want to give up on any of my top players, guys. But realistically, if I were to bring Kucherov in, I'd have to get rid of a forward. Who would be said forward? No, no, no. Oh, he's doing so good this season. He really is. Uh, I don't know. No, then, just for that reason alone. Yuha. I really don't want to give up on Yuha. Colomore may be an option. 
he is one of our main penalty killers, but if you look at his defensive stats, then we go down to Godard's defensive stats, they are way better, and we could have him on the penalty kill. So, you know what, then? How about Tyson Cullimore in there, then? Would that go through? It would not. <sighs> Shit, guys. You know what, then? We're gonna have to wait. And maybe... We're gonna have to uh, try and get another medium elite or medium elite player from this draft, and then we'll have to use those two uh, for potential to get Kucherov, because Kucherov is the player I would go after. I didn't mean to exit all the way out of the proposed trade thing. Let's go to Florida. I mean, I would not want to make a trade with Florida as much as uh, Stamkos would be nice. I'm assuming he has. Oh, geez, he has like zero value. It's because he's 35. And yeah, that contract is just abysmal. I don't want that. And I really don't think we need a goalie. Yeah, although Vasilevsky's killing it, clearly. Um, let's go see. How's he doing? No, he's not even doing that good. To be fair, our goalie is doing better than theirs. San Jose again, let's see. Man, they aren't doing good. I wish they would want to give up on Kucherov, man. You know what? I guess we'll have to do the draft uh, soon enough. And uh, we'll have to try and get an elite player. And uh, maybe then, like an elite player that's more than likely not going to make the NHL. Uh, then we'll then we'll have to try it, I guess, guys. And if so, bringing Kucherov in would be tremendous for this team. And guys, I'm I don't want to jinx anything. Like I'm gonna knock on wood, but uh, I I think Syracuse may win the league <laughs> down in the AHL. To be fair, I think how good we're doing right now in the NHL with Tampa, I think we may even be able to win the uh, or win the division. I wasn't going to say league, because I, I don't know. I, th I don't think we're the best team in the league. Dallas had more wins than us, and we just lost them. So, wow, a 10-4 to four loss to uh, Florida. You know what, guys? I think I might start going into our Florida games to slow sim them, just out of curiosity, just to make it, make it even more of a rivalry than it already is. So we've got one uh, against their, what is that, March, April, April? Wait, January, February, March, April, May, yeah. So April 5th, we have a game against Florida. We shall see uh, how uh, how good they are. Maybe uh, we could beat them up in a game. We'll, uh, we'll just slow sim it, of course, just like I would throughout the playoffs. Well, I don't even know if I would do the whole third period thing. Stopped on the Columbus game just to see, but... Uh, I, don't, I didn't see a notification, but I wasn't also really paying attention. Did we win, uh, or did we get a playoff spot yet? And just like I said, Syracuse has 125 points right now. I don't see them <laughs> not winning the or whatever the President's Trophy is in the AHL. I'm not sure about what it is. And Todd Jaspers, okay, so we've already clinched, and it looks like, yeah, definitely not the best team in the league. That is Philly. Uh, and I probably will cont will stay as Philly, and as you would expect, like I said, Philly was good, and that's going to be scary. We, right now, would be going against Detroit, and Florida's not going to make the playoffs. Holy shit. So last year they made the playoffs, and we didn't. This year we make the playoffs, and they don't. So hopefully this game they're just like, uh, guys, you know what, we don't like you, but... We we aren't making the playoffs this season, so we'll we'll let you guys get a win, so you guys can get home ice. You guys can go for your cup this season. <laughs> Let's see. We'll uh, we'll slow sim the game. Yeah, we'll slow sim our AHL game too. It's fine with me. Um, all right, well let's go. First period against Florida. Matthew Joseph makes it one nothing with a center ice goal against Mason McDonald. Great start. <laughs> Second period, no goals allowed. And the third period, ooh, I saw goals on both sides. Todd Jasper gets goal number 30 of the season. Mar Matt Barzell brought them within one, but Yuha Alavera was like, nah, 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 I got you guys. 
and gives us the 3-1 to one lead. Let's go, Ronnie Thomas. What a beauty of a game he had there. Jesus, that was really good stats. Uh, what did he say? Was it, it was 960, right? Uh, yeah, 960 save percentage. That's crazy. So I wanted Jaspers to get as close as he could to point per game. Unfortunately, he not going to get much closer than 73 points. I'd say he'll probably only have like a one-point game in this Winnipeg game. Uh, but since we did win that game, uh, we, yeah, we got the Y. We clinched our division. So after missing on the playoffs last season, guys, we are back in the playoffs, and we will be facing the Detroit Red Wings. All right. That'll be interesting to see how that pans out. I don't remember Detroit's team very well, or at all, actually. I, could, I, don't, I couldn't name a single player on it right now because I just don't remember it from earlier today. But let's advance the day. We'll see how Jaspers did. We'll see how we did Jaspers with a 2.9. He got another goal, too. 31 goals for Todd Jaspers on the regular season, my guy. Tremendous. Very, very good. So by the looks of it, those line changes really helped us out. Let's see, Detroit, uh, what? <laughs> uh, <laughs> wait, what? Why are we playing Pittsburgh? Uh, I'm confused. I am confused. Why aren't we playing Detroit? There's, <laughs> it's four and four. What? I'm so confused, why are we playing Pittsburgh? What? <laughs> We've got first. Oh, Philly. Philly fucked it up. They didn't get the presidents. <laughs> ah, Jesus. Uh, okay, wait. I'm so confused. So, New York first. Philadelphia second. Us third. Um, Columbus fourth. Pittsburgh fifth. Um... Montreal, or Buffalo 6, Montreal 7th, Detroit 8th. I don't get it. Why, why are we playing Pittsburgh? I am so fucking confused right now. You guys have no idea. I, I don't even know, but it's okay because we, we won our division title. We thought we were going to be playing Detroit, but apparently not. Where do we finish in the league? We finished 8th in the league. Not too bad. Uh, who finished last in the league? Let's see. Toronto. <laughs> oh, man. They were awful this season. And obviously, the Rangers taking advantage of the uh, fuck-up that the uh, Flyers had. And yeah, I guess I guess that really is shitty for them. Uh, well, for Philly, not for the Rangers, of course. So, let's see. 74 points for Jaspers. Okay, well, I was wrong about Drew Ann hitting the 40-goal mark again, but he was close to be fair. So we had two 30-goal scorers. We had five 20-plus goal scorers. That's not too bad. Yuha had a great season. Uh, all right. So, yeah, let's just look through this again. So Jasper's having, I believe, his second-best uh, er, career totals. Yeah, 74 points. Not too bad. That's his highest uh, goal total, though, so that's nice to see. Uh, he obviously led our team in points. More than likely our future captain. Jonathan drew out with 67 points, 34 goals. Last season he had 21. Yeah, yeah, last season was just not a good season from him. Goals-wise, I should say. But he's back in that 30-goal range. Uh, to be fair, he's only had over 30 goals four times in this series. So, interesting. Uh, Nemestikov, he had 62 points. So, he did he ever redeem himself? He's up to an 86. That's natural growth as well, I believe. Oh, no, sorry. It's statistical growth. But... He's up to an 86, which is perfectly fine with me. Back into the 60-plus point mark, so that's nice to see as well. Ryan Merkley, 58 points. Still yet to hit 60 points in his career, but that is a new career high for him. So not only did he have a much better season than he did last year, he just completely outdid himself this year, having the most goals he's ever had in his career. Um, third time he, or in one season, I should say, third time, or third high, no, fourth high, sorry, <laughs> Uh, most the most assists he's ever had, uh, most amount of points he's ever had, uh, most uh, or the highest plus minus he's ever had, most amount of penalty or highest power play goals, highest power play points, which is not bad. Also highest amount of shots, also his best shooting percentage, most time on ice as well. Wow, yeah, did uh, 
Did Ryan Merkley ever do good? Will he ever get into that Norris contention, though? He's going to have to get, like, at least another 12 points probably to do that one season. We shall see, though. Anthony Sorelli with 57 points. I think that is the career high for him. Yes, it is. It's also career high in plus minus for him. Career high in goals. Not career high in assists, though. <laughs> Uh, but, yeah, had a great season for Sorelli, so I, I, I'm glad I had him there. Victor Hedman's uh, 50 points kind of fell off there. I was thinking he was going to get close to that 60-point mark, and to be honest, I was thinking Merkley was going to hit around the 70-point mark. Yuha Alavara, a phenomenal rookie this season, did absolutely wonderful with 26 goals and 49 points. Uh, we shall see. Yeah, how good he did throughout the entire league in just a moment. D'Angelo, 46 points. Calfoot, new career high by just one point. But that's fine with me. He's up to an 88 as well because I believe he was an 87. Uh, Matthew Joseph, 41 points. That may be a career high for him. No, it's not. Sorry. He's had 44 a couple of times. 45 is his highest. Interesting. Um, Hentonen, he had 32 points. That is a career high for him. Uh, Tewton had 32 points, a career high for him. Cullum Moore had 26 points, obviously. Uh, he, actually, that's, that was his worst season. Not surprising. Uh, Lawrence Lake, 23 points, career high for him. Uh, Pat Stillman, 23 points, career high for him. Nice. So he managed to get over 20 points, which I'm very happy to see. Um, hmm. Not great from Radish. Only 19 points. Uh, Lipinov, obviously we stopped playing him. 10 points. But how did he do in the AHL? Um, oh, wait, no. I didn't actually play him in the AHL. Yeah, my bad. J JC Goddard. Only 7 points in 35 games. So he didn't do great. He's doing much better in the AHL. Maybe he just wasn't ready to be up in the NHL yet. Ronnie Woolley, only 4 points this season. I'm assuming, yeah, he was... The player to have the least amount of points on our team. So our uh, team goal scorer leader, our goal scoring leader was Drouin. Assist leader was Nemesnikov. Point leader, obviously, we know was Jaspers. Plus minus leader was Merkley. Most penalty minutes was Jaspers. Most power play goals was Alavara. Most power play points was Jaspers and Drouin, tied at 34. Most shorthanded goals. Moore and Merkley with two apart. They also were tied. No, never mind. Sorry. Tewton had the most shorthanded points with four. Uh, most game-winning goals was Cullimore with eight. Uh, most shots were Alavara, 289. Nice. Best shoot, uh, shooting percentage was Henton with a 14.1. Most time on ice was Ryan Merkley with 26. Uh, most face-offs won was Sorelli. Uh, he was 48%, which isn't too bad. Best percentage was Jermaine with 51. Most hits, probably Jaspers. Yeah, Jaspers. Most blocks, uh, Ryan Merkley. Wow, 105. Most giveaways, Victor Hedman. Most takeaways, uh, Todd Jaspers. Wow. Whew. Guys, I'm telling you, it's like, I think Jaspers could totally be considered for a Selkie player. Like, 50 giveaways and 77 takeaways. And Joseph, 37 giveaways, which is not a lot. And, but 68 takeaways, that's really good. Duran as well, only 38 giveaways and 64 takeaways. Really good. Who led our team in fights? Uh, Alavaro with two. We only have five fights throughout the entire e year. JC Goddard had one. Nice. What's his fighting skill? 65, Hedman, 75, Wooly, 72, Alavara, 65. Interesting. Um, that's all I got there then, I guess, guys. Let's quickly go look at the AHL. We're not going to look at all those stats like I did there. We're just going to look at who led the team in points. Looking like Leonov again. Yes, it was. 27 goals for him. Also led our AHL team in goals. Probably assist as well. No. Oh, Stephen Wolf. Jesus. Wow, did he ever do good? So this has a fourth liner, which means he'll be... I'm very tempted to have him on the NHL next season. Most or Highest plus minus was Bear Fair with a plus 41, and Chip Shore with a plus 30, 39. Then Bodie with a plus 34, and Kristanovich with a plus 31. Damn. Uh, <laughs> wow, crazy. Bear Fair has not grown. Will he be ready for the NHL? Wow, Jesus. Chip Chera had 21 goals. 
He had more goals this season than he had points last season. <laughs> what a great defenseman. Uh, let's go look at the goalies, which I did not do in the NHL. I completely forgot to do. Uh, Oliver Rodriguez had 44 wins. Didn't have the greatest save percentage, but he had a really good GAA. So I wonder if he's still considered for uh, a uh, that's not, but in the AHL, I don't, I don't know what it's called, guys. Uh, 65 games played for Ronnie Thomas, 36 wins, not too bad, with a 926 save percentage and a 2.13 GAA. You know what, Ronnie Thomas did good, and with his stats, I think he may be able to grow from that, which would be tremendous. I did not want to do that, to be honest. Looking like this will be in about around an hour video, guys. Uh, sorry, I truly do not want it to be so long. But let's see, who led the league in points? Steven Stamkos, of course. Stamkos, Tolvin, and then Besser, and they didn't make the playoffs. That top line is tremendous. Besser actually uh, had more goals than normal. Actually, yeah, that's second career or second highest he's ever had. <sighs> the fuck, man? How in the hell? Did 100 points. Only player to hit 100 points this season. 98 points. And then 95 points. Maybe I should have traded for Stamkos. I mean, I still could. Don't get me wrong. I still could. Uh, by the way, if you guys were wondering why I'm only thinking about Stamkos and Kucherov, it's because they're drafted by... Or, and Vasilevsky, I should say. It's because they're actually drafted by Tampa. And if you guys didn't know, for the series, I'm only... The only players I took from the fantasy draft were players that were actually drafted by Tampa, and then obviously we can only now use players that we have drafted, plus Tampa in general have drafted, so I could trade for Stamkos and I could trade for Kucherov. Thinking about it, kind of regret not trading for Stamkos now, but it's okay. Kucherov also uh, had was most or fourth most points in the league, so kind of, kind of really upset I couldn't get that one. William Carlson had a new career high. I want to see if there's anybody here on Detroit. Let's see, Ryan O'Reilly, 79 points, absolute beast. Uh, who led the league in goals? 43 looks to be the highest there. 49, though. Oh, yeah, Tolvin, and yeah, of course. Uh, most assist was Stan Coates with 65. Highest plus minus was Nick Ritchie. Oh, okay, I'm starting to remember. Detroit's lineup now. Yeah, they have like an 85 and 89 or 91 and then an 85 on their top line, I'm pretty sure. It was dry side one. Yeah. <laughs> Not 91. <laughs> 95 maybe. <laughs> Shit. Oh, we have to go against dry side. Oh, that's gonna suck. Dry side is my favorite player. I don't want to do that. Ah, uh, damn it, man. Uh, Ricard Raquel was the other one on that top. Oh Jesus, that's gonna be rough to deal with. <laughs> Ryan Merkley, though, was top three for plus-minus throughout the league. Not too bad. Most power play points was Steven Stamkos, then Nolan Patrick, and Nikita Kucherov, all tied at 30. Interesting. Most sh uh, shorthanded points is Brady Tetruck and Oleg Tudin and Vili Sarayarvi and Rizichka and Chitrin. So five players all tied with four shorthanded points. Most game-winning goals, Nick Ritchie with 10. Unfortunate. That's that's terrifying. Most shots was Eli Tolvin in with 358. Best shooting percentage in the league was Taylor Hall with a 19.3. Damn. Most time on ice went to Jeremy Waugh. Uh, just a couple of seconds more than... Um, more than... Fuck, where is he? Um, well, Ryan Merkley, there we go, yeah. 20, yeah, 2602 for Merkley, and uh, yeah, Jeremy Wall only had 37 seconds more than him, per average at least. I want to see giveaways and takeaways. Most, or let's see, least giveaways were Ryan McClatt. He only played six games, okay, sorry. I just, I had to make sure. Um... Somebody that actually, all right, let's sort it by forwards here. Because I feel like this actually matters um, for the Selkie. I just want to see, is O'Reilly contending for another one? Uh, is Jasper's contending for one? I would like to know. Rodney Hensick, did he play 82 games? He did. He had 19 giveaways, but only 41 takeaways. So let's see. He had a very minimal amount of giveaways, but a lot of takeaways. 
Junior Pittis. Oh, Sebastian Aho. Only 32 giveaways and 75 takeaways. That's really good. Uh, Furland, really good. Shifley, really good. Uh, is that Gorbachev? Yes, it was. Litowski, really good. Wow. Uh, Nashville looked to be pretty good with that. Whole taking away the puck thing. 65 for steal. Uh, I just want to see where is O'Reilly. Yeah, let's just see who led the league in takeaways. Um, oh, Matthews. <laughs> wow. I think Matthews may have the Selkie if it just goes on like giveaways and takeaways. 53 giveaways and 161 takeaways? That's crazy. Zibanejad's also on that team, I believe. Oh, no, sorry. I thought he was. I swore he used to be. <laughs> um, interesting. O'Reilly's still up there, don't get me wrong. He had more block shots. He had more hits. Much better face-off percentage. He also took more face-offs. Played a lot more minutes. Um... Let's see, where's the uh, points? Penalty minutes. Matthews had way, way less penalty minutes. Uh, I don't know, man. I think uh, I think it could go to Matthews, to be honest with you guys. It'll be interesting to see. Ah, I forgot to look at goalies. We're going to look at goalies, and then we will be done with this episode. Let's go. No, not the AHL. Let's go back to the NHL here. Let's look at the goaltenders. So I heard something the other day that apparently save percentage, the highest save percentage in the league, is the goalie who will win the Vesna. So will Corbusala win the Vesna? Let's see, or is it by both stats? Because, I mean, I guess by far 100%. The best goalie in the league was Corbisalo, but Ronnie Thomas is probably second. I mean, I'd say he's second. He's got 1.001 less save percentage than Subban, but he's also got 0 .0, or 0 0.02 less uh, giveaway or goals against sorry than uh, Subban. So I'd say like the top three goalies are one Corbisalo, two Thomas, and three Subban. It'll be interesting to see who wins that then. I'll go back to the AHL just to see. Ooh, Victor Andren, 947 save percentage. Darcy Kemper's an 82 playing in the AHL. Justice Sununen, uh, I don't want to actually look at that. No, back to the AHL, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's look at skaters. I want to see, did Leonov lead the league in points? He did not, Hunter Shinkarek did this season. John Stahl, wow. 92 offensive awareness. Bjorn Fleischmann. Is he a German? He is. Uh, Rudolf Belsers is there as well. Freddy Gaudreau. Victor Leonov. Still pretty high up there. Christopher N. Interesting. All right, guys. I'm done. I can't. I keep, keep getting distracted. So, of course, we will be uh, playing the uh, Detroit Red Wings in the next episode. Uh, as for our AHL team, we're playing the Toronto Marlies. Will we be able to make it to the Calder Cup final? For the third season in a row, let's find out. Will we be able to make it past the first round for the first time in this series with Tampa? Let's find out. If you guys know why I, I'm playing Pittsburgh, please, please, please let me know. I just, I don't get it. I have absolutely no idea why. Anyways, guys, that'll be it from me. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you did all enjoy, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.